So since Eric Ten Hag's appointment as Manchester United manager, the speculation surrounding Manchester United has now moved to his backroom staff, and one of the names that's been repeatedly linked is Paul Mitchell. But who is he, and what would he bring to Manchester United, and is he the right man at this point in United's rebuild? Well, I'm going to be answering all of those questions in this video, but before I get into that, are you sick of paying extortionate prices for football shirts? Well, that's why you need Jersey FIFA. I used to only be able to afford one or maybe two jerseys per year, but because Jersey Fever have new season jerseys available for less than £20 and retro jerseys for around £30. I now have a whole collection of great quality football shirts and my favourite has to be my Manchester United 2003-2004 shirt with Ronaldo on the back. So if you like any of these, a link will be left in the description below and if you use code AlantisFootball at checkout, you'll also get 5% off. So Paul Mitchell was a professional footballer himself prior to his ventures into the football world behind the scenes, but he would be forced to retire early at the age of 27 in 2009 after being unable to fully recover from injury. He was at MK Dons at the time of his retirement and when Carl Robinson took over as MK Dons manager in 2010, the club created a recruitment division with Paul Mitchell as head of recruitment. He would then move from MK Dons to Southampton in January 2012 and this is where he would make his name. After the Saints gained promotion to the Premier League in Mitchell's first season, Mitchell would then begin to work under Maurizio Pochettino after Nigel Atkins was sacked midway through Southampton's first season back in the Premier League. And it's fair to say that Mitchell's recruitment was key to Southampton's golden era midway through the 2010s. He was responsible for bringing in players for minimal fees who would go on to be integral first team players for Pochettino, such as Nathaniel Klein, who was signed for around £3 million, Jay Rodriguez, who was signed for around £8 million, and Ryan Bertrand for around £12 million. But the real success would come from signing younger players who would develop into top-level talents, or at least get moves to bigger clubs, with 22-year-old Sadio Mane being signed for £20 million, Dejan Lovren signed for £9 million, Wanyama signed for £13 million, Tadic for £12 million, and Alderweireld was initially signed on a season-long loan during Mitchell's last season at Southampton. He then followed Pochettino to Tottenham, and was instrumental in bringing key players in like Deli Ali for 5 million, Hyung Min Son for 25 million, Alderweireld would come in for 14 million, and Kieran Trippier for 4 million. And as we know, all four of these players would progress into top level Premier League players under Pochettino, despite being signed for reasonable fees or minimal fees in the case of Deli Ali and Kieran Trippier. But his time at Tottenham ended terribly because, well, Daniel Levy didn't want to spend any money, and so Mitchell's string job turned into a nightmare, and he was forced to sit out his contract on gardening leave for 16 months. However, he returned to the game in February 2018 when he was named Head of Recruitment and Development at RB Leipzig, and that summer he'd bring in Amadou Hadara for 17 million, Nordi Mukele for 14 million, and Matthias Cunha for 13 million. But in 2019, Mitchell brought in probably one of his best signings of recent seasons, which was Christopher Nkunku arriving from PSG for just 11 million pounds and Danny Elmo also came in that summer for 19 million as well. He then went to Monaco in the summer of 2020, coming in with the remit of clearing things up after they had rapidly declined from their fantastic 2017 side that won Ligue 1 and reached the Champions League semi-finals, languishing in 9th place at the end of the 2019-2020 season. In the south of France, Mitchell without doubt improved things, bringing in players like Caio Henrique and Kevin Volland and allowing youngsters like Aurelien Chouamani and Benoit Badish Shele to flourish into players being linked with some of Europe's biggest clubs and in doing so, with Niko Kovac as manager, helped Monaco to a third place finish at the end of his debut campaign. So now with rumours of another overhaul at Monaco with manager Philippe Clement, alongside Mitchell looking likely to leave, that would leave the door firmly open to Paul Mitchell joining Ranić and Ten Hag at Manchester United. But what would this mean for Manchester United exactly? Well first of all, Mitchell will bring the clarity of decision making and strategy that United need and his philosophy will align perfectly with Ralph Ranić's, which you would expect of them both having been closely associated with and working together at RB Leipzig. Now right now United need a drastic rebuild or the equivalent of open heart surgery as Ranić said in a recent press conference. This means that United need people working in recruitment who align with their desired vision, which will be to bring in players who can develop into world class talents and provide a clear path from the youth teams to the first team, rather than simply bringing in the most obvious transfer targets and then erratically thrusting youngsters into the first team throughout a season and hoping they can experience 
experience the Marcus Rashford effect. Paul Mitchell showed at Southampton and RB Leipzig that he can identify young talents around the ages of 19 to 23 who have the capabilities of developing into those world-class players that United need. Now the reason this is an essential quality for United to have in a head of recruitment or really just throughout their recruitment team is because this rebuild isn't going to be solved with three or four big signings. United are going to literally need to bring in between 10 to 12 first team players over the next two to three seasons and probably a minimum of five up to around six or seven this summer alone. And so they can't go blowing 50 million pound on obvious targets as they have done in the past with players like Bruno Fernandes, Wan Bissaka, Harry Maguire who was substantially more, Varane, Fred, the list goes on as there simply won't be enough money to go around to cover all the areas that do need to be improved. So Mitchell's eye for talent is going to be extremely useful but not just in terms of identifying talent from outside of the club but also for establishing a clear pathway for talent inside the club to progress from the under 18s and 23s into the first team. As at Southampton he was the head of recruitment when the likes of Luke Shaw, James Ward-Prowse and Callum Chambers all broke through into that first team and this once again is exactly what United need as I would go as far to say that United currently have a golden generation of youngsters coming through with players like James Garner, Hannibal Medjbri, Ahmad Diallo, Alejandro Garnacho, Zidane Iqbal and Alvaro Fernandez all being players who I can see becoming established first team players for United if their development goes as planned. So from a recruitment and internal development of players point of view Mitchell brings exactly what United need but he also has experience in rebuilding a side as a whole which he did recently at Monaco. When he came in in 2020 he got rid of then Monaco manager Robert Moreno and completely dismantled the existing squad there reducing the number of players on professional contracts from 77 to 39 with 10 of those 39 being from the academy. So Mitchell completely cut the fat from Monaco's squad trimmed down the excess that wasn't offering value for money leaving them with a lean squad filled with young players not just from outside of the club but also directly from the youth setup which to me is exactly what needs to happen at Manchester United. Get rid of the aging Deadwood on big money and trim it down to the bare bones replacing the Deadwood with younger players with greater potential and promoting some of the youngsters who prior to this had had their development paths blocked by these big earners offering little on the pitch. Whilst Ranić will likely oversee the whole operation at Manchester United I anticipate that Mitchell's responsibility will be more concentrated solely on player recruitment from outside of the club and player development from inside it. As I said, United for the past decade have always gone for the obvious sign-in. The summer of 2019 was meant to be the rebuild after the disaster of Jose Mourinho, but Manchester United spent £80 million on Harry Maguire, who was worth closer to £40 million in reality, £50 million on Wan-Bissaka, who was probably worth only around £30 million at the time, and Daniel James for around £15 million, I think it was, who probably wasn't even good enough for Manchester United. But it's not even just the money. Without doubt, there were better options on the market in each of those positions that would have given United not only better value for money but also better quality players. What Mitchell will bring to United is similar to what I think Michael Edwards has brought to Liverpool which is being able to sign players for between 25 and 35 million pounds who aren't complete unknowns but haven't yet made that full jump from developing player to top level talent and because United will no longer solely be targeting players who are routinely linked with them over the course of months the prices United will pay will be significantly lower or at least much better value for money. At Leipzig, Southampton, Monaco and even Tottenham as well, Mitchell was focused on bringing in players from around 18 to 24 years old who still needed developing and would cost between 10 to 20 million pounds. However, at Manchester United, he's going to be looking to bring in players on the next stage of their development, maybe between the ages of 21 to 27, costing between 25 and maybe 40 million pounds. The objective will be to bring in these talents and have them develop into top level talents within a season or two, rather than over the course of three or four seasons, which was the case at his previous previous clubs. Having Ranić and Mitchell behind Ten Hag is going to give United a coherent strategy. All three men will be in the same wavelength when it comes to recruiting players knowing exactly what the side needs and how that specific player will fit into Ten Hag's system. We've seen how successful Michael Edwards has been at Liverpool signing players who are ready to explode into that top level bracket bringing players in like Salah, Mane, Fabinho, Wijnaldum and now Luis Diaz and Diego Jota for around 25 to 40 million pounds and this is exactly what United should be trying 
trying to do. Over the next two to three seasons, if United can bring in between 10 and 12 players for between 30 to 40 million pounds under the age of 27 and on wages that adhere to a wage structure, then that will be an affordable and realistic way of transforming this squad from one filled with aging, declining dead wood to one capable of winning the Premier League. And I believe that Paul Mitchell, alongside Ralph Ranick, is the perfect man for this job. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed that video, remember to subscribe to the channel, give the video a like if you enjoyed it, and put your thoughts in the comment section as well. And I'll leave some of my other Manchester United analysis videos linked in the description for you to check.